and spouse, chairperson and members of the Council of State, Your Excellency the Second President of the Fourth Republic, former Second Lady, Otufo Asantehene, dignitaries of the Ghanaian and Trinidadian States, the Chief of Defense Staff of the Ghana Armed Forces, the Inspector General of the Police Service, Police Force, Commanders, Officers, Men, Women of the Security Services, Nananum and traditional rulers, members of the Diplomatic Corps, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. It was 63 years ago today that our forefathers dreamed of independence for our nation became a reality. Ghana became an independent nation and gained their freedom from the colonial power, Britain. The celebrated Calypso singer of the time, Lord Kitchener, put it into what became a famous hit. This day will never be forgotten the 6th of March, 1957, when the Gold Coast successfully got their independence officially. Ghana, Ghana is the name. Ghana, we wish to proclaim. We will be jolly, merry, and gay the 6th of March, Independence Day. Today, as we mark this sacred day on our calendar, it is worth noting that the great majority of our population was born after 6 March 1957. They identified that day only through old black and white newsreels, and it might be difficult for them to imagine the sheer euphoria and magic of that day. Last year, for the first time, we took the official celebrations out of the national capital city of Accra to Tamale, capital of the northern region, and a huge success it was. This year, we are gathered here in Kumasi, capital of the Ashanti region, as the focal point of the official celebration. The happiness of the day is not meant to be limited to the place of the official celebrations. This is a day that should be celebrated by all around the country and by all Ghanaians and friends of Ghana, wherever they are. Indeed, on that day of 6 March 1957, the celebrations were not limited to the new country, Ghana, or to Ghanaians alone. The rest of the world joined to celebrate with us. We were the trailblazers for the independence movement of the continent. We held out hope for restored dignity to the black race around the world. African Americans and the peoples of the Caribbean especially, walked tall and cheered us on. It was not accidental that the Trinidadian, Lord Kitchener, composed the defining song of the event. We're carrying on that relationship, born 63 years ago, by having as our esteemed guest of honor at these celebrations the Prime Minister of the Government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, the Honorable Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, MP, one of the great figures of modern Caribbean politics, who has given us such a superb speech of commendation and encouragement. Prime Minister and Mrs. Sharon Clark Rowley and members of the Trinidadian delegation we wish you a warm Ghanaian welcome, a big Aquaba. <laughs> On your second visit to our country, and we know that you know you are at home and among your own 
in your beautiful Kente cloths. It is a matter of great joy to us. The last year, we had such enthusiastic support for the year of return from the Caribbean and the Americans. The Prime Minister of Barbados, the Admirable Honorable Neil Mockley QC MP, was also with us last year, and she accompanied me to Yendi to witness the historic performance of the age-old Damba Festival by a new Yana, the first in many, many years to mark the, the end of decades of hostility in one of the ancient kingdoms of our land. Prime Minister, we are here in Kumasi, in the presence of the Asante skill of the famous Osei Poku Oyoko Royal Dynasty, Otufo Osei Tutu II. There is one thing that any visitor here can be certain of. It is the cultural capital of our country. Kumasi welcomes people from all parts and makes them feel like they belong. It was also the capital of one of the greatest kingdoms of pre-colonial Africa, Asante, whose luster was comparable to that of the kingdoms of Benin, Oyo, Mali, Songhe, Congo, Mutapa, and Zulu. So we are indeed in historic premises and are grateful for the attendance of the mighty Asante Hine and the other noble traditional rulers. We remember today as we show those whose vision inspired the independence movement. We pay homage today as we show to those who dare to dream of this kaleidoscope nation made up of different peoples. And we give praise as we show to those who made huge sacrifices to make possible on March 6, 1957. <coughs> to the members of the Aborigines Rights Protection Society, who protected our lands from the grasp of the greedy imperialists. The members of the United Gold Coast Convention, who first sounded the clarion call for freedom the members of the Convention People's Party who brought the battle for freedom to a successful conclusion and all those who took the fight to the colonialists. We recall with pride and salute the memories of Yasan Toa, Jacob Say, John Mensah Sama, Joseph Casey Hafer, George Moore, R.S. Wood, Thomas Hutton Mills, Pamela City, James Quidier Agri, Neil Kwamna Boni III, Ephraim Amon, George Alfred Grant, Joseph Wachi Dankwa, Francis Awono Williams, R.S. Blake, J.W. DeGraff Johnson, Emmanuel Obecha Bilanti, Edward Akufuado, William Oforiata, Ebenezer Akwaje, Kwame Nkrumah, Kwame Kese, V.B. Anna, Jimmy Christas, Kamla Agbeli Bedema, Kojo Bozio, Kofi Bako, Krobo Edusei, Nancy Tibo, Mumuni Bawumia, S.D. Domo, Kofi Abrefa Busia, Joe Apia, Victor Owusu, R.R. Abonsa, Bafo Koto, Modesto Apalu, S.G. Anton, 
a Kwasa Soso, and Dede Sikisan, and many others. Since we gained our independence, we've had difficulties. We stumbled in the search to reach our potential. But Ghana has never lost her position as the inspirational leading light of the African continent. At 63, we know that we have squandered many opportunities that properly utilized would have brought us to the economic breakthrough to which we aspire. We lament, and rightly so, the infrastructure deficits that plague all sectors of our lives. and the considerable number of our people who still live in poverty. But if truth be told, we have solid reason to rejoice and be thankful to the Almighty, for this is a blessed nation. It is a good thing that we are usually so very hard on ourselves. And the critical voices sometimes drown out everything else. For as long as we have not achieved our economic goals, we cannot and should not relax and be complacent. However, we should learn to count our many blessings and not talk ourselves down unnecessarily. It surely must count for something that our nation has been spared the ravages of civil war that have wrecked some of our neighbors and other nations on the continent. It must come for something that we have been spared the epidemics that have brought havoc to other nations in our neighborhood. It certainly must come for something that we've been able to keep our terrorist activities from our country and we take, can take for granted the peace and stability that define Ghana. Our politics might not always be the most edifying, but they are demanding and loud, and all citizens cherish the right to freedom of expression. We are, we are into the 28th year of this fourth republic, the longest uninterrupted period of stable constitutional governance in our history. We've had regular, hard-fought elections and peaceful changes of administrations and managed to avoid any third-term maneuvers. That is something for which we should applaud ourselves. We should never forget the development through the democratic process, the path we have chosen in this fourth republic, is not exactly the easiest governance option. Many of the countries that have made miraculous economic transformations did so more often than not through authoritarian regimes. In earlier times, several of the developed economies build their successes on the back of slavery and work practices that would not be tolerated in any democracy today. Some may admire the results of raising down whole villages and new structures appearing in weeks. But we have to ask ourselves how much regimentation needed for such things would be tolerated by the Ghanaian psyche. Or their eyes, where would we fit in our weekend funerals to be able to put in seven-day weeks? We should be proud of the liberal democratic path we are treading and unite to make it work. We could and should be able to bring out our people out of poverty and into prosperity faster. But let us acknowledge the good things are happening in our country, and we are making progress. 19% of our people do not have access to potable water.
but 81% of people in Ghana presently have access to safe water. We are making progress. The supply of electricity has reached 85% of the country. We are making progress. No child has died from measles in the past 17 years in Ghana. Fellow Ghanaians, in our country, measles used to be the leading killer of children aged under five. We are making progress. No longer do mothers have to sell off their most treasured fabrics and jewelry, and fathers go to money lenders to be able to see their children through senior high school. Today, senior high school education is free for every child. We are making progress. <coughs> there are more children in secondary school now, especially young girls, than we have ever had. We're changing the curricula and focus in education to meet the needs of the modern economy and prepare our young people to compete on the global scale. We are making progress. More and more people are embracing the need to preserve the beauty of our environment and the purity of our waters and oceans. We are making progress. Some 25 years ago, only a few wealthy people carried mobile telephones. It was a status symbol, and it gave them access to opportunities that few could dream of. In the year 2000, there were 90,000 mobile phone subscribers. In 2020, there are 41 million subscriptions. Mobile subscriber penetration is bigger than the population. We are making progress. The digital revolution is changing the face of our society and our country. And soon, we will take a deserved place as a modern economy. We are making progress. The creative arts are thriving, and there are exciting things to interest a wide range of people. The, the fashion scene is vibrant, and unearth new talent every day. Take a look around this stadium and feast your eyes on the riot of colors and the wide variety of styles that our Kente weavers can conjure. Every day, this ancient, royal, eye-catching, beautiful fabric is reinvented to win over new generations. The Kente, of course, has crossed over our boundaries and is no longer exclusively Ghanaian but the symbol of identity for peoples of African descent everywhere. Our designers, tailors, and dressmakers keep Ghanaian-made clothes in the top range of attractive clothes. Art galleries are alive with established and new painters and sculptors and their signs of their innovative works all around us. We have always been known for musical talent, and this generation is keeping up the tradition. Fellow Ghanaians, there's renewed confidence in our foods and a strong belief in the things that define us as Ghanaians. We have always been known for arguments and debates, and in an election year, it is predictable that the decibel level would go up. That is what we are currently experiencing. But as the saying goes, even as the arguments get louder, we keep a keen lookout for each other's eyes. There is an account proverb that says, When we fight as members of a community or family, we bite off hair, we do not uproot it. In other words, in our gravest moments of fury, we strive to avoid bloodshed. The consensus is holding for all of us to work towards the prosperous, peaceful, and happy Ghana we want. We all recognize that, we carry that the responsibility we carry 
as the first Saharan colonial country to gain independence is not simply to build a successful country. We owe it to the rest of the continent and the black race to demonstrate that indeed we can build and run a successful, prosperous and happy country. This is a task we do not share and which all Ghanaians accept. Our Pan-African vision remains on course as we continue to be in the front line of the effort to forge a united Africa and our peers have conferred and honored us with the duty to host the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area. We are making progress. During the course of the year of return, which we marked last year, we were glad to welcome hundreds of thousands of visitors from the African diaspora. And we're hoping that the renewed relationship between Ghanaians and our kith and kin from the Caribbean and the Americas will grow from strength to strength. The initiative of Beyond the Return is the vision of a black world on both sides of the Atlantic which leverages hard work, enterprise, creativity and innovation to engage in mutually beneficial trade and investment cooperation that will guarantee the prosperity and dignity of black people the world over. I must say something before I conclude about the subject that currently concerns the whole world, and that is the novel coronavirus outbreak. It is a medical crisis that is bringing in its way death and economic difficulties and is spreading fear and panic throughout the world. In the early days of the outbreak, I constituted on 7 February a high-powered emergency response team to handle the crisis which has been monitoring developments and reporting to me on a daily basis. Strict checks at our entry points are being conducted with rigorous screening procedures. Isolation and treatment centers have been designated for potential cases and a quarantine center has been set up. 5,000 personal protective equipments for health workers have been procured and distributed to all regions and major health facilities, points of entry, teaching hospitals, treatment centers, and selected health facilities. Additional health equip protective health equipment is being procured. Training of health workers in the treatment of the disease has been provided and is ongoing. In the interim, non-essential travel into Ghana is being strongly discouraged from high-risk countries, namely China, Iran, Italy, Japan, and South Korea. We're counting on the experts to do their part to safeguard us, but we all have a responsibility to take measures to help ourselves and each other. The recommendations are for each one of us to practice basic personal hygiene and be extra careful with sanitation. For the time being, as the Ministry of Health has advised, we have to revisit our custom of shaking hands and stop doing so completely. And we must cover our mouths when we cough or sneeze. We should pray, of course, that the Almighty continues to shield us but it is also the time to pay attention to the health experts and reject all fraudulent claims for cures that will only threaten public health and safety. Please listen to and take seriously the public education messages being put out by the public health authorities. And I urge the churches, mosques, traditional authorities, civil society organizations and opinion leaders all to join in helping to Ghana to keep Ghana safe. We appreciate the active collaboration being offered by us by the Global Health Authority, the World Health Organization, and by friends of Ghana in these trying times. 
government on its part is to determine is determined to do whatever is necessary, including providing the requisite resources to ensure the safety of the population. Fellow Ghanaians, we've been treated to a marvelous performance by school children and men and women from the military and the services. It took hours and weeks of practice to be able to put up such a flawless display. And I wish to congratulate them all. The lessons will not be lost on us. To you, the men and women of the military and the services, who put your lives on the line to keep us and the country safe. I say Ghana is deeply in your debt. To you, the children who have been part of the captivating ceremony, I say very well done and prepare yourself to carry the torch into a greater and brighter future. I wish all Ghanaians and friends of Ghana across the globe, the joyous 63rd independence anniversary. And once again, Prime Minister Rowley, thank you, your wife, and your delegation for coming from Trinidad to join us to share our special day. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. President.